right. each um, each league has a like if we're re I think we're region five. Mm -hmm. It's either five or seven, but and the Cape Ann League has representatives to Region 5, so we can go there. And, you know, okay. and the Cape Ann League says, yes, we want to do this. And, okay. and then every year there is an annual regional meeting where all the principals and all the athletic directors go, and they have an exchange of ideas at that. Okay. And, and their enactment for their authority derived from school committee's authority under the, under the State Law Chapter 71, Section 47, where you have the authority over the athletics and extracurricular activity, and you actually delegated some of that authority to the MIIA, um, and they have an assembly of delegates, standing committees, and a control board to enforce that. And and so um, there's the, the benefits and and the provisions, let's say, from being a member of that a member of that association, uh, and there's minimal standards that you have to agree to to be a member of the MIIA and participate um, because that's some of their authority comes from state comes directly from state law I, I would um, you might want to consider when you um, when the level sort of a penalties are, are changed to have a discussion about the about the involvement of the student council at least with the discussion of that because that was the in that was the intent of um, you know, that was the intent of that provision, where you chose to, where you chose to incorporate 62.1 into your handbook, which wasn't required, but you did. It, it, my um, interpretation of the state law on that is that any change you make in those penalties should be discussed with the should be the prin the principal should oversee that discussion with the student council and make a bring back to you the recommendations and 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 some feedback from the from the student council for your for your consider for your consideration and for the principal's consideration um, as I said no veto power of the students but that was the th that was the in, in intent of that was the intent of that uh, Kathleen, obviously this is a universal issue it's not just you know confined to North Reading have you seen any programs in Triton or have you done anything so you, you follow the MIA guidelines um, strictly or what things have, have you seen I can tell you at Triton the 62.1 uh, is not included as part of the handbook um, but I can tell you that the community right next to the three communities that make up Triton Georgetown has an organization called Georgetown cares um, and really exemplifies a lot of what Ms. Araketti has been talking about in terms of community involvement, bringing all factions of the community together to talk about the societal uh, impact on what we try to do in our schools on a regular basis. Um, and a, a friend of mine happens to be the lead parent that is uh, heading up Georgetown Cares. And so I know that there's some information out there that can benefit us as we move forward with the Youth at Risk Committee and thinking about um, additional activities we might want to engage in in order to address this. Now, and how, how do, do you know how that committee works? The Georgetown Cares is it is it an educational committee or what? It's a committee that's um, it facilitates the youth at risk behavior survey with the school departments, and then uses those statistics to engage in conversations around what are some of the issues that our community is facing, and what are we going to do about it and so that there are representatives of all of the stakeholders sitting at the table, taking a look at the data, and coming up with recommendations for next steps. So not one particular agency is responsible, mm -hmm. yet all agencies are there, and including fire and police, mm -hmm. to talk about what are our roles and responsibilities in our community to improve this situation, whatever that situation may be. Because I do know, I think it might have been John Menard that mentioned that we have not done that kind of survey in our schools for quite a while. We've done some other surveys about school pride and my, my uh, voice. We got my voice, or exactly. But we haven't done a survey the type I think that you were talking about. It's interesting because we had a uh, youth at risk committee meeting in the last week, and uh, the youth risk behavior survey came up, and it's one of the goals for next year that the committee decided is. It's been a long time. We've done the My Voice surveys, which is nice. It's, you know, how do you feel? What do you think? Mm -hmm. But, you know, the youth risk behavior is, you know, do you drink? 
we had unprotected sex, right. like, well, all that smoking. kind of stuff. Right. Uh, yeah, the smoking, and and it uh, will delineate what the percentage of youth is and that kind of stuff. Um, the the type of committee that, that uh, Kathleen just talked about, Revere has a very, very active one called uh, Revere Cares. Uh, Saugus started one patterned after Revere based on results of a youth risk behavior survey called Saugus Speaks Out. And it's the same thing. It's, it's, it's all the different aspects of the community. Um, the one in Revere, and I think the one in Georgetown, if I'm not mistaken, they actually are included in the town budget. They have a budget. And in Saugus it was you know, grants and that sort of thing. Um, very, uh, in the time I was, I was at Sykes, very active in bringing speakers in and putting together programs. Um, you know, this is what the kids think, this is what the parents think, now let's all get together and try and uh, incorporate different views. Uh, was it, in the time I was there, it was very effective. You, you need to have, I'm, I'm sure, the person you're referring to. You need somebody who's really uh, passionate about about it and is willing to drive the bus, but uh, very effective, very effective community-wide. And um, I think it, I think it is something that North Reading doesn't have, but you know, Jenny O'Leary certainly would, yeah. would mm -hmm. jump on that. I think we would do a great job with it. And I think it actually was Jenny who mentioned the Youth at Risk Survey yes. the last time she was in here. That's right. So it might um, make sense, maybe not for the next meeting, your first meeting, but to have maybe someone from the Georgetown Cares mm -hmm. organization come in and meet with us and just kind of tell us what they do and maybe have Jenny O'Leary in at the same time. Yeah. And, and maybe we can get some, because because our, our Youth at Risk subcommittee does a great job, but it's not a community-wide right. subcommittee per se. So I think that's something we should we should look to maybe. Um, uh, yeah, I think you should. I think it would be great, and you know, I, I am doing my dissertation on right. bullying, so I, this is a necessary expansion, I think, to some of the work that we are all working toward. I mean, the, this discussion to me is a prelude to doing more community work, and with you know the youth director position being funded and our moving our community moving in that direction, I think we're in a good place to bring a lot of different stakeholder groups on board. I would like us to see. Uh, have us do some surveys, but I want us to be very careful careful about it because these topics are the most sensitive topics you can ask kids about. Mm -hmm. And getting uh, accurate information is going to be crucial. You know, alcohol and drugs are underreported. There's a reason for that. So the you know youth risk behavior survey is great, the URBIS, um, but it does have limitations. So I think um, having some bringing some data in would be good. Um, I could possibly bring in a couple of things we could look at since I've used it in my career. It's a it's a very good resource for planning. Great. I'll do that. So let's put that maybe on for the if we officially have a second meeting in July or a meeting in <laughs> August. So whenever our next meeting is after July twelfth, we'll get something on the agenda for that. That'd be great. Any other questions for Nancy before she leaves? So we'll see you next year for uh, All right. we'll see you next year for negotiations. <laughs> <laughs> we still got a long time. Yeah. Nice seeing you. Thank, thank nice you. Nancy. Appreciate it. Never mind. All right. This is really making me appreciate my air conditioning. I'm telling you, this is this is it's quite nice in here. Okay, I'm getting slightly delirious. So. Um, <laughs> Oh, this is actually exciting. Um, Mass MSBA, uh, Mass School Building Authority update. Mr. Dr. Mandel. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, keep the committee up to date. We've submitted two reports, two more reports. Remember, we did the intent certification of intent um, a, a while ago, and we also did the final roster of the uh, SSBC. Uh, we had five reports we were supposed to submit. So, uh, Mr. Nelson and Mr. Hardiker had done the. Uh, maintenance report um, and uh, capital planning within the district and we submitted that that's there's a copy of it in the central office it is about three inches thick and it's just, it's a tremendously complete comprehensive job I didn't make copies for the committee um, I want to read that yeah, yeah, so I know, yeah. I know. Yeah, that's, well, I'll, no, I'll do what I can for you. Borrow one. Just don't put it yeah. on a CD because it doesn't have to be. Right, that okay, be that'd be good. Yeah. <laughs> and the other one is the enrollment information request. Uh, Dr. Troden had submitted 
basic enrollment figures and uh, the uh, MSBA had sent back 10 questions associated with it. I put in a packet quite a while ago. And so those two program uh, reports were submitted. Um, they were received by MSBA on Friday. I got a call from Katie Timmons. We called her up and said, you're getting them tomorrow. Please let us know when they come. And she said they were fine. Um, I, there's a copy of the uh, enrollment report in your packet. I also left at your uh, seats a copy of the uh, capital budget statement, which is a combination of school department and uh, town information. Um, Greg, yeah. Greg Valkunis uh, and I went over the figures. Um, he signed it today. Uh, Mel signed it before the meeting started, and I signed it today. So that's going in the mail tomorrow. And once that hits the uh, the desk of Katie Timmons, then we're finished with the first round of reports. Um, I would then expect that a phone call will come. I actually expect a phone call to come in the next week or two uh, to set up a meeting between MSBA and the, the uh, school secondary school building committee and school department to discuss primarily what's in the enrollment report um, and then the other parts of it going forward. Um, and uh, you know, certainly, if need be, I can go to that meeting. That's not that won't be an issue. Um, again, I, I've said this uh, uh, several times, but. They're very happy with the uh, progress we're making. We're right on where we should be. The, the day after the vote on the feasibility study, I called her up and told her, and I emailed her that the feasibility study had been approved. So we're, we're okay. We're where we're supposed to be. And uh, it will be very nice to get this last report in the mail, believe me. I did have one question on the, um, and I don't know if, they, if this needs to be amended, but on the June 22nd report, this is, I think this is the enrollment report, yes. and then on the, the back, um, we break out the classrooms in the middle school and the high school, and I like the fact that for the middle school, we broke out the fact that there are 10 modular classrooms, right. but I don't think we did that on the high school. I think the high school is the D wing and the cafeteria, but it doesn't specifically say that those are modular classrooms, and, and I just... I think that would, you know, be just one more point that strengthens our cause. Just to call that out. I don't know if we, I don't know if it's too late to do that. Um, Carl, is it the D wing at the high school? That's the modular classrooms. Yes. So it'd be the D wing, and then one of the part of the cafeteria, correct? Yes. Okay, so it's eight, a total of eight modulars at the high school, right? Six D wing. Yes. The cafeteria equals two, so it's eight and ten at the middle school, right? Yeah. So we have 18. Well, yes. But I do think um, if we could just make a note that the D-wing classrooms and half of our cafeteria are also modular structures, sure. that would be that'd be great. Any other comments, Jerry? Yeah, just Cliff and I were at the last uh, secondary school building committee. I think it was, was the last Tuesday, Cliff? I think it was. Um, the day after our last meeting. Oh, yeah. And we're moving forward um, with hiring a project manager or looking for project manager. We need an architect. Uh, Again, continue with the same architects that we have. Uh, we did some appointments to subcommittees, uh, in particular a, a, a financial subcommittee that's going to be handling the, the financial paperwork. I think it was Phil Dardino and Don uh, from the uh, finance committee. Don Keller, Don Keller, right? right. Um, and it's a tight timetable. Uh, I think one of the plans is to have a meeting uh, after our next school after committee meeting, meeting that hopefully Kathleen could be there and we can bring her up to date or she can meet with Chuck prior to that even because uh, we have to get the feasibility study done then we have to get the town meeting. Uh, well, we get, have to get the feasibility study done and approved, obviously. Right. Uh, first thing you have to do is hire the owner's project, project manager. manager. Yeah, and that's the first critical thing. You do that with the state? Is that with the state? Well, or they or have a list of oh, they have eligible. A list. We have, we have yeah. But, you know, by Chuck Carucci had asked me to get involved with developing the RFP for the owner's project manual. So I began uh, asking some colleagues uh, because uh, it's sometimes helpful to work from a template. Mm -hmm. And I, I worked at it for several hours, and then I, I called the MSBA for some questions. And they told me uh, politely but firmly that I should stop and that they wanted to have a meeting with the North Reading Group prior to us moving ahead to advertise the OPM document. 
So I did stop. 